All right, here's how you change a fuel pump on a 2001 Chevy Silverado. The fuel pump is located inside the tank on the driver's side, and the tank is located under the bed. The fuel pump is somewhere in this location right here, but in order to get to it, you either have to jack the bed up between the frame and the bed or drop the tank or take the bed off completely. Now as you can see it's got a toolbox on it so we'd have to take that off and then it's got this bed liner which is like velcroed in so we'd have to rip that out and yeah It'd be way too much work. So there's hardly any gas in this truck right now. So what we're going to do is just drop the tank. That's going to be the easiest way. Now, before you do this, you're going to want to make sure, probably disconnect your positive lead on your battery. That's a good idea so that it's safer. And then lay up under here. And there's two straps, one right there, and one right there. And once you take those off, put a jack or something up under here. Put a jack, a block of wood with a jack up under here, something so you can lower it down easily so it doesn't fall on you if it has a ton of gas in it because it's going to weigh a lot if it's got a lot of gas in it don't underestimate this okay now you can see where the lines go into the fuel pump this is a top shot of the gas tank what we did is disconnect that one and that one you just squeeze the little thing right there on both sides of it and pull it off and then it's clipped to the tank the lines are clipped to the tank so disconnect them and we left this long one on right here but disconnected it from the evap canister and then you're gonna have to snake the filler neck back this way or disconnect that hose clamp right there and it's really dirty, so we're not going to disconnect the hose clamp. But after that, you should be able to lower the tank down on the ground. Oh, also make sure you disconnect those two electrical connectors and lay them off to the side. But after you do that, you should be able to get it on the ground. You can see here we got the tank out and our heat shield was bent from some off-roading but we're gonna bend that back and you can see the top of the tank here is really dirty so we're gonna have to clean this up but you can see where that line is right there now this one's a pain to get off up under there if you can't see what you're doing it's bigger on one side than the other and you squeeze it like that and just pull it off and you can see where the other lines were clipped on there right there and then here you can see that connector that's on the other one a little bit better you just squeeze it here and here and pull them off just squeeze them and pull them off but yeah we'll get this cleaned up now you can see we got it all cleaned up good and to get the fuel pump out what you have to do is pull this clip so it's out of the way and then you're gonna have to tap it a little bit here, this way, to get this ring to come, to get it to loosen. And once you do that, you should be able just to lift it out. Now you can see the new one on the left compared to the old one on the right. Now you can see this one, it's pretty worn out. You can feel how loose it is, the, see the play in it compared to this one here which is pretty tight and there's hardly any play 
and that was one of our main problems. It wasn't just the fuel pump that was bad. You're gonna have to get your level indicator and pop it on the new one and make sure you copy the old one. And then of course you're gonna have to put your O-ring around here and then it's ready to reinsert into the tank. Now you can see the connector is different on the new one compared to the old one and it comes with a new connector and you're gonna have to splice these wires according to the wiring diagram into the truck harness. Now it comes with these crimp connectors in the bag but I hate using these crimp connectors. What I'm gonna use is I'm gonna solder it and use some marine heat shrink on the wires. Now this heat shrink isn't like regular heat shrink, it has hot glue liner inside the heat shrink so it'll keep out any water from wicking down into the solder connection. But you definitely want to make sure that it's watertight. Don't just use these crimp connectors and then electrical tape it because it's going to give you nothing but problems. Do it right the first time and solder it with some marine heat shrink. Make sure that you know exactly what you're doing when you solder this under there because there are fumes and stuff. You want to make sure you don't start a fire so know exactly what you're doing before you do it. I'll show you how to solder them and stuff in a minute. You put the new fuel pump in, you have to align the little float so that it goes in the right way. Now we cleaned as much of this dirt around the rim as we could but we didn't want to knock it in the tank. And there's a notch, it only goes one way. That notch right there. And then it just seats down like that. You take this ring and you put it over it. Now remember, there's springs that pressure that uh, push it down in there. So you got to fight it a little bit. <clears throat> but you rotate the ring around, and you're going to have to press down on it, and then have one person press down on it, and one person tap it over to get it in place. And once you do that, once you tap it around, this little locking clip's going to fit back in one of these grooves to hold it. All right, now when you pound this thing back on, it's going to be a real pain to do it. You got it because it's got to compress that O-ring. What you want to do is get a big old screwdriver and tape the tip of it so that it doesn't spark. Well, to help it not spark. And you're going to have to get in here and hit this one, hit this one, hit this one while pushing down on it. And it's going to be a real pain to do, but once you get it, that's how you get it on there. Be very careful you do not break these. Do not break these when you get in here to hit this, but just keep going at it and eventually you'll get it on. It's a real pain, but that's how you get it on. You can try to use a punch. If you have a brass punch, use that instead. Okay, so you can see now we're putting the wiring harness on. This wiring harness, the connector is completely different. As you can see so it has to be put on and they supply these crimp terminals right here and this heat this is heat shrink it'll shrink to the wire but I mean I hate crimp terminals so bad so I'm just gonna solder it I mean I got I hate crimp terminals you can use these there there's nothing wrong with them it's just my preference is not to use them. Um, you're going to come back here and size it up. You know, hold it up. Two hands. I can't do it with two hands, but make sure you cut the length. Cut it like an inch longer, two inches longer, whatever. 
It's better to cut it longer, obviously. And then you're going to want to strip back a little bit of wire and connect them together. If you're using the crimp terminals, you just slide the wire in, slide the other one in, crimp it, and then hit this with the heat gun. Um, hit the whole thing with a heat gun or a lighter. Don't use a heat gun or lighter up under here with the tank installed. Do this with the tank out and way out of the way. Okay, now you can see we've got them spliced together. This is how you do it right here. You take them and you stick them into each other like that and you twist them together so they'll be like that and you end up with this. Make sure you don't have any stragglers. Make sure they're all twisted together good and get your heat shrink and push it back down here so the heat doesn't affect it when you solder it. Now I know it's a bit more work but if you have the materials necessary to do this throw these freaking things in the trash and solder it because soldering is the way to go. You slide it back up over the wire once it's soldered and then you hit it with a heat gun or a lighter. Be careful with the lighter under here but hit it with the heat gun and shrink all those wire separately and then just tape it you know right here right here and then at the end tape it and put it back in this loom okay now you can see these wires are beautifully soldered when you do this make sure the solder is completely absorbed into the wire and make sure you don't have any cold solder joints As you can see they're all done perfectly it takes a lot of practice to be able to do it good, but they're soldered perfectly. Now make sure you don't have any, you can get a file or something and hit down any little sharp pieces so that it doesn't poke through like that right there. So that it doesn't poke through the heat shrink. And now we'll just slide our heat shrink up the wire and then hit it with the heat gun you're done with this yeah like I said soldering is so much better than crimp connectors I mean this is the right way to do it now you can see their heat shrunk and you can see the little bit of hot glue that comes out of them because it's marine heat shrink it's got hot glue in them it's a good idea to wrap this back up about this far with electrical tape that way it'll protect you from any abrasion damage and then push it back in the loom so now we're gonna take this wire and push it all back in here okay now we're done with the wires you can see we got our old one and our new one and we got it all hooked back up in its clips. I got this wrapped right here about halfway. I might put me another one right here just to help hold it together. And then make sure you wrap it at the end down here. Next we're putting the tank back in. Alright now you can see we got our lines hooked back up. Here's how they go. Make sure you get it up on your jack before you plug these in so you have enough reach. And then this line, this little line right here, plugs on the end of here. Alright, so now you can see we got everything put back. We got all our lines connected and all the clips back where they need to be. Do a close up and they ran back. Everything's clipped back where it's supposed to be. Back in those clips up there. And we got our straps back on right there. And right here. And right here. 
And then, forgot to tell you, this ground strap right here, you have to take this ground strap bolt off right here. Right here. In order to get the tank completely out. And then you gotta push your filler neck back up there. That concludes the fuel pump installation and the tank reinstallation. And now you gotta change the fuel filter. All right, here's, here's how you change the fuel filter on a 2001 Silverado. This is a Wix filter. Three, three, four, eight, one. Only use Wix filters. Don't use Fram, those are trash. Get a Wix filter, they're the best. I mean, you can get like AC Delco or whatever, but just get a Wix filter. I mean, it's the best. Why not get the best and not have to worry about it? But I'll show y'all how you take the old one off here in a second. Here's how you remove the old fuel filter. Get a flared box wrench like this. I believe that's what it's called. They use them for brake lines. They use them for brake lines so that it doesn't strip out. Because you can see the end of it. It's totally boxed in. And you come up here. And you put it on here. Now be careful because it's going to shoot gas. Probably shoot gas out of it. You want to make sure you have a good lock on there. So it doesn't strip it out. And then... And then pull down on it and break it loose just like that. Now come over to the other side. Same deal. Get it on here. Break it loose. Take it off. And then you just unscrew it here and here and move a line out of the way and push it out whichever way it's gonna have to probably go this way It'd be easiest you just push it out and then put your new filter in okay now you can see we got we're getting the old one out it's gonna drain now the old one's out, we'll put the new one in. Okay, now we have our new filter in place and we're gonna screw it back on. Now you want to make sure you don't strip these. Get them hand tight first. Okay, now finish her off with your big wrench on the filter. Now don't go crazy on this. Okay, now I'll do the other one. Okay, now the new fuel filter is installed. Now you can reconnect your battery and test her out. All right, now reconnect your battery. All right, now test her out. All 
All right, so you can see it runs amazingly. So there you go, guys. That's how you change a fuel pump and a fuel filter on a 2001 Chevy Silverado. Like and subscribe to this helps y'all out. Later.